Hey guys, so today we've got some player versus player shenanigans in the video. Um, if you've got your own PvP stories, write them down below, I'd love to read them. And who knows, maybe we can make a video with some of your PvP comments. Um, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and we'll see you at the end of the video. We were playing a 5th edition game in the DM's homebrew world. In this world, characters were either born innately magical or are born unable to ever cast magic. Like Last Airbender. Warlocks being an exception to this rule. The DM also introduced a crafting skill reminiscent of 3.5 in Pathfinder. It was pretty variable, allowing you to make anything from a stone axe to a catapult, as long as you had the right ingredients. It was an intelligence skill. All players were also given one free skill proficiency to put anywhere. Our group was a standard. A conjuration wizard, me, forge cleric, arcane trickster rogue, and a berserker barbarian. One thing stood out to us, however. As most of you know, intelligence is the go-to dump stat for barbarians, but ours made it a point to make it the second highest after strength. He had also taken proficiency in the craft skill. We shrugged it off as the player compensating between playing a barbarian, a class he hadn't touched yet, and exploring this new option to its fullest. To be fair, everyone except the rogue picked that skill. Zorg, our barbarian, had a backstory that sounded more like a patchwork of a rogues and a rangers. He lived peacefully in his village for years, but one day it was attacked. Everything and everyone was killed by a volley of fire from the sky. The only reason he lived was because his parents' corpses laid on him, shielding him from the flames. After this, he retreated into the woods and lived off the land, building anything he could to survive, and swearing vengeance on those who killed his village. A strange thing we all noticed is that he acted like he knew he killed them, but never said a name, even when pressed on the issue. We decided to drop it and continue on. For the most part, it was a standard campaign. Go to the place, kill the thing, get the item, rinse and repeat. Slowly we noticed Zorg's uh, tendencies. It's standard practice to go for the spellcasters first, but Zorg tore into them. He didn't kill them, he made them kill themselves. What? He did this by chopping their hands off so they couldn't cast most magic and stabbing a dagger through their wrist before he started skinning parts of them alive oh, before no. forcing them to drink potions only to do it again. Their only way out was to slice their own throats with a dagger in their wrists. Jesus That's fuck. brutal. <laughs> fuck me. All right, okay. The first few times we never saw this. It was either in the heat of the battle or he would hide them and torture them after while we counted our loot. The first time we did see this behaviour, it was done under the guise of torture for information, but slowly we began to notice. After his kills, he would craft weaponry, armour or jewellery from their bones to use, or sending some off to an unknown receiver. By this point in the campaign, the barbarian had dipped a few levels into rogue and picked up expertise in the crafting skill, bringing his bonus to 14 total. We had been tracking down a cult of warlocks. The barbarian loved it, more mages to murder. By this point, the group kept a hawk's eye view on Zorg. We may be morally ambiguous, but we won't allow unwarranted torture to happen, often forcing him to kill the mage quick or doing it ourselves. Round level 15, we found the source of all these warlocks. It was basically the DM's answer of what would happen if a beholder had sex with a dragon and the baby was infected by a mind flare. It was a pretty rough and tough battle that resulted in the loss of our cleric and myself, the wizard. The rogue insisted the two of them haul our corpses to the temple and cast in our one free resurrection per campaign. But the barbarian refused to aid in bringing back a spellcaster, but wouldn't stop the rogue. Ultimately, the rogue decided on the cleric, figuring the cleric would bring the wizard back later. While the rogue was working through his dilemma and started making his way back to town at half speed, the barbarian stayed behind to craft a magic item. His intelligence stat wasn't for show, the character often sat with a wizard in silent study of the world. One piece of information he had found had led to this moment. Four hours later, the barbarian caught up to the rogue, and on Zorg's shield rested the large, jewel-like middle eye of the beholder. A natural twenty had resulted in a perfectly preserved eye encased in crystalline amber barrier. As they reached the gates of the temple in the mage capital of the continent, the barbarian reached for the only magic item he carried, it was a trumpet with a single use that would open a portal in front of every single person the barbarian considered an ally that would lead to his current location. The DM intended this item to be used for the climactic battle, 
but that was a war that would never happen. From nowhere, countless people decked out in bone armour and weapons poured into the city. The barbarian turned to the rogue, his longtime friend, and said, Remember my village? The one I mentioned? The one whose ashes ruins we walked through together? The rogue nodded slowly. There were three things I never told you guys about. One was that I was not the only survivor. Two was that it was not the only village. And three was who had done it. Who, who did it? The rogue asked. Magic casters, Zorg replied, as he stabbed the arcane trickster in the gut. He then walked into the temple, shield forward as his non-magical allies followed, with no clerics to bring back the dead, and no magic to protect them in the face of the siege's anti-magic leader. The city fell overnight. Over 80% of the continent's spellcasters were slain that night. The DM had planned a huge ending where the PCs would protect the city from a huge army, but the barbarian decided to take that idea for himself. It was a fun and grand ending. The DM gave me, the rogue and the cleric three high leaders to roleplay as and commanded the city troops so we wouldn't be left out. We are excited for the next campaign. I wonder who the big bad will be. Be me, making new character at session zero with the rest of the group. I want to make a half-elf warlock. Roll for charisma. 666. Six, six. Everyone was there to witness it. 20 charisma at level 1. Couple of sessions later. Be me. Level 2 warlock. Be not me. Level 2 paladin, cleric and fighter. Paladin and I struggling for control of the group. Paladin challenges me to a duel after the session. DM says okay and rest of the group gathers around. He has super high AC and the DM puts us 30 feet apart so he has a chance to get close. Roll initiative. 17 for me, 9 for him. Oh yeah, it's all coming together! Yeah. <laughs> I use Eldritch Blast. Okay, come on, I'm sorry to say That's that. the most basic bitch I'm, thing. I'm sorry, but Wargulks are just Blast. Yeah, that's parts. it. Like, you know, I, I know they're cool and all, but like, they just don't have it for me. Like, I know. As well. Roll. Natural 20. DM rolls damage. Roll 2 D10s. 9, 7. Jesus oh Christ. god, 16 damage. But wait, there's more. <laughs> Add Agonizing Blast damage. DM says to double it. 26 damage cantrip. His max hit points was 19. Don't PvP the warlock. <laughs> yeah, well, I'll give him that. Look, okay, don't get me wrong. Works are cool and all, but I would say that was more just dice roll than the That's different. good dice roll. It, it was, it's dice! Yeah. <laughs> Be me. D&D friends invite me to a level 20 PvP game. Yeah, okay. We're allowed a certain amount of legendary magic items. No artifacts though. My friend who is usually our DM is really really excited and tells me about how he's going to build a barbarian. I try to stop him from telling me too much because I don't think I want to metagame. He says he's confident he can probably win anyways. Metagaming is fine within reason. Haha, <laughs> okay. I tell him about a wizard I was concocting. None of the details had been hashed out yet so I didn't get to share too much. In his excitement, he lets it slip that the best strat against him is an anti-magic field. Okay. Why would you tell somebody that? Why would you tell somebody that? Okay, that, whatever. A few hours beforehand, I come up with a strategy. Obviously, an anti-magic field isn't going to work. A barbarian can take me out without much effort if I pop one. But I know that the reason he said that is because he probably has some crazy good magic items. Just three of us ended up playing. I knew the other guy well enough to know that he's going to play some kind of tiefling rogue. Oh, one of those people. <laughs> Everyone knows, oh yeah, I'm going to play tiefling rogue and fucking everything. I go first in initiative, which I wasn't expecting, since there was a rogue. I was super afraid of the barbarian stunning me or anything, and the rogue getting sneak attack on me could probably take out a quarter of my HP. I cast Force Cage on myself, forgetting that I have no way to dispel the Force Cage. I'm stuck in here for an hour. Barbarian and Rogue chase each other around the arena. The Rogue's plan was to run around with his ring of invisibility and essentially duck and hide until he could tire out his opponent enough to get a good shot in. That would have worked in anyone, but a level 20 Barbarian who has literally unlimited rages? They both do a decent chunk of HP, but it's clear the Rogue can't attack the Barbarian without getting his shit rocked the next round. I narrate that I'm casting while in my Force Gauge. Specifically that I've got a weird looking pickle jar in my lap. <laughs> the barbarian ends up camping out by me and chilling. I straight up ask out of character if Rogue is just going to wait until the force cage is up. 
both agree that yes, neither are going to attempt to do anything since the barbarian can't find the rogue and the rogue can't hit the barbarian. Yeah, okay. Force cage goes down. Barbarian is confused that I'm apparently dead on the ground. Feels a tickle in the back of his head. Makes a charisma save with his 8 charisma. With a save of 21, he had no possible way of saving against it. I had cast Magic Jar while in the Force Cage. The naughty child gets banished to the jar to atone for his sins. I see all his cool equipment, including a ring of three wishes with one charge remaining. Interesting. Rogue does nothing. I ask his player several times, but he said he was going to wait until my spell was over to attack. Haha, <laughs> yeah, okay. I use his last wish to cast Leoman's secret chest. Barbarian watches helplessly from the pickle jar, while I stow all of his belongings into the chest, send it away, and destroy the replica chest, losing all of those magic items forever. I take my own ring of three wishes from my catatonic body, walk behind a pillar, cast an 8th level delay blast fireball, place the ring back on my body, wait 55 seconds, and switch back to my own body. Rogue and Barbarian are hyperventilating at this point. Rogue regrets not doing anything to stop me, and we officially declare that we're back in turn order so it doesn't get confusing. Barbarian punches me. I laugh in his face. He was relying on a belt of Storm Giant's strength and a hammer of Thunderbolts for his strength stat, which is now a 12 after getting rid of those. Wait, how, why, why did he leave? Okay, sure. <laughs> Rogue pops up and gets a couple of decent shots on me using the scout's double sneak attack feature. Definitely stings. My turn again. Debating on a couple of choices, but I've got my ninth level spell left. So let's have a grand finale. Shape change time. I'm an ancient white dragon now, and it's time to wreck some shit. I fly 20-ish feet up just to be a dick to the barbarian. He throws a rock at me and actually does like two damage. Everyone is slightly impressed. Yeah, I'd be impressed. <laughs> Rogue bolts and turns invisible. LMAO. Blindside, baby. Baby? Oh no! Oh. I'm so cringy! Oh. Ah! <laughs> the rest of the match is me chasing around the rogue and breathing cold on him, casting spells and laughing while the barbarian throws rocks at me. I end up killing them both and watching as the barbarian rages beyond death, eventually petering out and dying in front of me. No one wants to play PvP with me anymore. And honestly, I'm not sure I want to go to that dark place again. I was coming for blood. <laughs> well, I quite enjoyed them ones. They were actually pretty cool. Yeah, I really um, like them. Normally, I'm not a big fan of PvP in tabletop games, unless the game's specifically designed for that. Yeah. You know, because normally, whenever it comes down to that, it's normally just someone's being a salty wee bitch. <laughs> you know what I mean? PvP me and Ross, boy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but no, I hope a lot of you guys leave your own stories down below. I think it would be really cool. We could maybe do a video on that. I yeah. think that would be nice, you yeah. know. Um, also, we're very close to the 100,000 mark. Woo-woo! Whoa! Woo-woo! <laughs> but like... <coughs> <coughs> hurt me <laughs> well like honestly um if you like the videos please remember to share with your friends all of our good shit we really want to hit that hundred thousand mark and if i get the silver play uh the silver plaque in then i'm gonna post a picture of my balls in the discord Yee, on, top and of the on top of like the four that's already yeah, in the discord <laughs> yeah. so like as always hope you guys have enjoyed like subscribe all of our good shit and we'll see you in the next video bye all those